So in this tutorial, uh, we're going to cover the delta settings. What the delta settings are is they let the user view the state machine execution order of compiled test code. So there are really two main things that the this tool offers. Uh, one, it lets us view the overall execution time of the entire test plan, as well as viewing the individual times for measurements within a section and then individual panels within that section. And two, it lets us view the instrument state changes. So when transitioning from one state change to, to another inside of test sections or moving from test panel to test panel, we can see uh, how the instruments are changing and what the settings are for each one of these. So if we back up, looking at Cassini's graphical programming environment, it lets us structure the tests up here in, in the top part of the panel in a way that makes sense to us as the user. Uh, and it gives us two constructs. There's a concept of a, a test section highlighted in blue. And then within each test section, there are test panels. What's going on beneath that structurally is that the optimizer is allowed to execute measurements in any order that it wants within a test section in order to improve the test time. So what becomes important to us as the programmer uh, is that when we build these measurements and we fit them into a test plan, we need to know, we need to have some insight into what the compiler actually ends up doing uh, so that we can, we can take advantage of the optimizer and let it handle reducing test time for us, but still enabling us the ability to view what it ends up doing and giving us some control over the structure that we want when we execute the tests. So to access the, the Delta settings, uh, you have to start with a compiled test program. You can see if I go up here under options, display Delta settings is here, but it's grayed out. So in order to view the Delta settings, we have to compile it into that state machine and then we can view that state machine. So with this test plan, I just started out with a simple example to start and then we'll come back and um, I'll re-enable some of these other measurements in here. And you can get a sense of, of what the optimizer is doing and how it, it's viewed uh, in the Delta settings. So if I go ahead and compile this, and so what, uh, what it's doing in the background is it's, it's setting up all the measurement states, but then it's also structuring them based upon what the optimizer comes up with. But basically, in, in this instance, I've, I've got two main things. In, in my DC test section, I'm doing a current measurement. And in the RF test section, I just have this gain sweep active. Uh, so what this is doing is I'm going to measure B2 parameter. And then I'm also going to be measuring another power up in the globals. I have this set to A1 parameters. So it's a B2 over A1. So I'm computing gain. So to view what my, my instrument setup is going to look like and what my measurements look like, I come back up here to options and I can, I can click on display delta settings and it's going to pop open this window. And I'll walk through the basic parts of it and kind of give you the highlights. But just starting out in general, it's divided up into two panes. The left side of the pane is giving us the, the structure of the test plan itself. So these are the, the actual measurements that are happening and they're, they're numbered out for us. And you can see it's organized by test section. Uh, so the DC test section comes first and then the RF tests happen. And then it executes any disconnect settings that we have in our test plan, if we have some disconnect settings in connect sequence, we can see it, it will be represented here um, in, as part of the flow. So when you left click on anything on the left side, on the right side, it starts filling out information. So if we start at the test plan settings, this gives us an overview of the test times. So it gives us, you know, starting out here at the top, it gives us the total tests. So there's 14 tests that happen in this test plan. The hardware setup time shows the time it takes for the, uh, the total instrument setups and changes between the setup states for all of our measurements. The settling time is the built-in settle time of the instruments when switching from one state to the next state. Um, so this is 
anytime we're doing uh, uh, switching from, say, a voltage setting from one volt to two volt, so any settling that needs to occur, or if we're going uh, from one gigahertz to two gigahertz in a source, whatever instrument time is, is needed for that uh, to stabilize out is included in the settling time. In addition to that, any delay buttons that the user puts in there, such as pauses or sequence delays, those are also captured underneath the settling time. The hardware measurement time displays the time the instrument spent capturing data. Below that is the measure delays. So that's the time between multiple measurement captures. So if you have uh, repeats or averages, the time between each one of those captures is what's displayed as the measure delay. The computed hardware time shows the, the total overall hardware state change time. So this is, this is time spent purely setting instrument states from one state to the next state. So any one of those changes, uh, that's reflected in the computed hardware time. The calculation time shows the computation time spent processing measured values. Uh, below that is the overhead time. So this is going to be any time values associated with data transfer on, on the, uh, the RIFL communication bus between the instruments and, and the computer processor. And then those three values, the computed hardware time, the calculation time, and the overhead time, those all add up to the expected time value. And so this expected time value is giving us is an estimated time execution for the entire test plan. What you'll find is that uh, when you compile it, you're going to get an expected time. If we were to run this test plan and then open up the delta settings again, we would get a new expected time, and that time would reflect the actual execution time that it took to execute all the tests in there. And so these timing uh, values are reflected for each one of these uh, that, we, that we select over here on the left. So if I were to just jump down to the, the IDD current, it's going to give me, now this is the time for just this measurement setup and execution. But in addition to that, we get these other fields below, the deltas, the sequence, the state changes.